No, my son. You must play Centipede the way it was meant to be played. Not with a joystick, but with a trackball. Special thanks to Glenn's Retro Show for creating these fine products. A trackball, a spinner, an interface board which interfaces to a Raspberry Pi. Combine it with OpenCAD for RetroPie and you have the 3D printed solution you've been looking for. I've been watching the Glenn's Retro Show for a number of years now, and his channel is outstanding. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to go check out his channel. He's got some excellent content if you're into arcade, retro, video games, and so forth. Uh, recently, Glenn has released some products that are really, really cool. The trackball, the spinner, and the interface board. And these components work not only in an arcade one up but also with a pc or a retro pi or raspberry pi running retro pi so in this video we're going to take a look at how to build an opencade box that includes a trackball and a spinner and add it to your opencade solution if you're not familiar with opencade no problem i'll put a link up above where you can learn more about the solution so let's go ahead and check this out <music> All right, so here we have the Glenn's Retro Show Trackball. So we're going to go ahead and unbox it and take a look. Here's the manual. Little welcome note. Very cool. All right, now let's get to the good stuff here. Let's go ahead and open the trackball. That's nice. On the back side, there are some dip switches. You can use that to change the colors of the trackball. Yes, it lights up. And some screws. All right, now we'll move on to the spinner. Instruction booklet. It's always a good idea to go through the instruction booklet and read it understand it very well before you begin working on this another welcome message great oh wow this looks nice uh there's a allen wrench included in here we're going to need that as well as the cable and we'll go ahead and remove the spinner itself we'll go ahead and take the plastic off wow it's got a nice weight to it all right Here's the PCB for the spinner, and just so you know, we have instructions on wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash GRS for Glenn's Retro Show. If you'd like to follow along there as well, you can certainly do that, and there will be some updated information in the future. So now you go there and you download the STL file, and you have this. This is your control panel that supports the trackball and spinner, both. And when you assemble this, you want to make sure it's assembled like you see here. You want the cable pointing up towards the top of the large circular area, like so. And the trackball goes to the left. And from here, you just go ahead and install the screws. I used uh, some M3 screws and nuts, and the length, you want to just make sure it goes all the way through. I believe it's around 16 millimeters. And use a pair of needle nose to secure the nut while you're screwing it in. It's a little bit tricky, I'll be honest. It's kind of hard to get your, it's definitely hard to get your fingers in there, but uh, with needle nose, it's still a little bit tricky, but with a little bit of patience, you'll be able to get it just fine. So we just repeat the procedure for the rest of the screws. 
And just tighten them up pretty good. And then when we're all done, we'll just tighten them all up really good and tight. Yeah, there we go. Looks pretty good. And it spins. That's always great for a trackball. Matter of fact, it spins wonderfully. <laughs> awesome. All right, so now let's go ahead and put the spinner assembly together. This is pretty easy. Actually, it's even easier than the trackball. You just push the screws up through there, throw four nuts on it and four screws. And that's pretty much it as far as the assembly. Again, I'd like to remind you to go check out Glenn's Retro Show. Again, I'll put a link in the description below so you can go quickly visit it. And we'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit and put all the screws and nuts in. And, of course, we need to put the spinner in. So we'll go ahead and get that Allen wrench. There we go. And we'll open it up a little bit so it'll slide right on in. And once you bring it down, raise it up just slightly. You want to make sure that there's no rubbing between the spinner and the control panel. And once you have it set, tighten it down. And also on the back side, you want to make sure that the spinner has all the dip switches in the on position. All three. That's if you're going to be using it with Retro 5, which I presume you will be in this video. Take a look at the instructions. You have P1 and P2, and that's going to be for your spinner and your trackball, and then your USB cable will plug in here. So now we're going to go ahead and open up the interface board. And go ahead and plug in a micro USB cable into the micro USB port of the interface board, like so. And notice here you have two uh, diagonal standoffs in the base of OpenCAD. So you want to go ahead and put two M2 screws in there. And if you are enjoying this video, please subscribe. I always appreciate it. Great to have people watching videos. Otherwise, it's no fun to make them if nobody watches them. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and screw these M2 screws in and tighten it down fairly well. You don't want to get too crazy tightening it, but just enough to make sure the board is nice and secure. Now we're going to open up the cable here and hook up the cable that's going to be going to the spinner. And... Here's the one for the trackball. We'll go ahead and install that. And the other end of the spinner will plug in to, of course, the little connector on the spinner itself. I'm going to go ahead and apply power to it. And notice we have lights on the trackball. Cool. And you can adjust the colors of the lights. Just take a look at the little booklet that came with it. You know, show you the combination of lights, or you can do it like I do it, just kind of randomly flip them and see what colors you get. That's always a lot of fun, too. <laughs> so now we're essentially done. At this point, you would just take the USB cable and connect it up to your Raspberry Pi and screw the base into the joystick or controller of the other base that you built. And there you go. That's pretty much it. It's far as the hardware aspect of it. Now let's talk about the software. First off, you want to browse to your Raspberry Pi. In my case, it's called OpenCade 2. And go to the ROMs and the Advanced MAME and copy your games over. Next, you want to attach the USB keyboard. Go ahead and launch. A game in this case I'm launching Tempest press enter and make sure that the ROM plus emulator is set for advanced main 1.4 hit enter go ahead and 
launch the game. You'll want to do this for Centipede and what, uh, whatever other games you want to install. And then you can go in here and make any adjustments if you want to adjust the sensitivity and so forth. I'll just let you look at the screen here. Go ahead and pause it and see if any of this is um, something that you want to modify on your end as well. And once you're done here, let's go ahead and play Tempest. Now here I'm going to put the picture in a picture in the lower right so you can watch me play with the spinner while the game's playing. It's extremely responsive. It's just, <laughs> it's just like playing it in the arcade. I mean, actually, the spinner is fantastic. I can't say enough about it. The trackball is awesome as well. Earlier in this video, you may recall my son was playing with the joystick. I wanted him to see what it was like to play with the joystick. And then we switched over to the trackball. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. <laughs> so we had to play a little while longer, and he had a great time with it. And it's so nice having a control panel now that has a real trackball, a real spinner, a joystick, buttons. It has everything you need all on this one control panel. Yes, it took a little while to print all three bases. Yes, it took a while to print all the control panels for it and put it together. But man, it is so worth it. I built several of these open gates, as you might expect. Primarily for my personal use, I built one for a friend, and they're great. And I really hope that you consider building one yourself. And when you do, I hope you also consider using the Glenn's Retro Show trackball and spinner. I think you will really, really love it. He's done an amazing job with these parts. The setup couldn't be easier. And the gameplay is great. Okay, so now we'll do the same for Centipede. Press Enter. Change the emulator plus ROM to Advanced MAME 1.4. Then we'll go down to Launch. And we'll hit Tab on the keyboard. Go to Analog Controls. And again, you may want to pause this if you want to set yours just like mine. Take a look. And we'll go ahead and return back. and play the game. We'll go ahead and add the picture in a picture so you can see what I'm doing. Hit a coin, hit start, and let's play some centipede with the trackball. I'm not the best at centipede, sorry about that. But the controls work very well. As you can see, they're very accurate. Plays exactly how I remember back in the early 1980s. And I play about the same as I did then. <laughs> Fortunately for you, this won't be a long game, but it gives you a good idea of how the controls perform and what it looks like to play Centipede with a trackball. trouble now. It's already at the bottom. I'm going to 
survive. Yes. Okay, well, it's about time to end this video, so I'm going to go ahead and get out here. And we'll let Glenn close us off on this video. Take it away, Glenn. Be sure to tell them about the Glenn's Retro Show Trackball and the Glenn's Retro Show Spinner. And I thank you all for watching. And remember, everyone, game on. <laughs>